It's October at Sydney University, and the 21st birthdays are coming thick and fast. For Charles and the gang, it's a time to face some bitter truths about growing up. Um, women have like, always thrown themselves at Charles, so he, he doesn't always notice it. <laughs> but Charles has the unfortunate habit of, of falling in love with women who just don't love him as much. <laughs> oh. such, as, such as Rani. <laughs> It's the time of year when everybody should be getting down to work, but life for uni students is full of distractions, not the least being each other. Charles has overcome the bruising he got in last week's elections and slept off his 21st. What are you looking for? Looking <laughs> for matute readings. I can't find any. Like others who spend their uni lives doing a thousand other things, he's left his study work till the last possible moment. Have you got a toot this afternoon? Yeah, I've got a toot this afternoon. And oh, like, I haven't had them for weeks. I'm going to have to go and buy another set. I mean, you think I'd, I'd be able to find them? I'm so old. We're more likely to confine our associations to similar others if we're emotionally insecure. Or is the opposite happening? Is it that its attraction is coming first by chemical uh, reasons or whatever, and that uh, through a process of um, conformity, just interacting with other people that we like, we become more similar to them. And then we'll it's crunch time for these students. With exams imminent, they can't procrastinate any longer. For many, it's a lonely moment in their uni lives. It's not always easy to determine the direction After having had their hand held through 15 years of schooling, they must face the future on their own. Cal lost weeks of study notes when her flat was burgled. She's managed to borrow another computer, but I don't know how she's going to cope doing 30 hours paid work each week at the hospital. Oops, bump. She desperately wants to finish her psychology degree and become a practicing therapist. One, two, three. Oh, oh sorry. There you go. Oh. I'll bring you a tray round. There you go, you pop it there. You get your photo of Hamish. <laughs> Happy now? Mm. Good. How would you like to be? Brand new. How are you doing with your exam preparation? Oh, I don't. Um, it's going to be a very stressful couple of weeks. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But at the moment, it's not impossible. We shed all our ideas about the music you hear when your path leads you into the blind.
blank holds of fear And every shadow screams that you're coming too near So please stay away for a while For Andrew, singer-songwriter and popular star of the Arts Review, the year's showbiz distractions are long gone. It's time to stop playing and start doing some work. I'll give you anything, just please don't speed away. Don't speed away. So how much work have you got to do in your thesis? Well, I've got to do the whole thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't begun it. I haven't even really thought of what the topic's going to be. And how long are you meant to spend on this? Well, I should have really started last December. And it's now the beginning of October. <laughs> it's, due, it's due in two and a half weeks. So I'm really in a bit of a, <clears throat> a, bit of a position. I'm worried about Andrew. His lateness with his work seems almost self-destructive. In the past, he's been treated for bouts of depression. The last thing he needs now is a relapse when he's just a few weeks from graduation. Andrew is one of the brightest in his year. If he gets his thesis in, he could easily win a scholarship to come back next year and do a PhD. Oh, hi, I've just come to see Elizabeth and Andrew. Well, oh, yeah, sure, it'd be possible to have a bit of an extension, but he couldn't have much yeah. more than a week or two because uh, you know, we, we have to get all the marks in by the 22nd of November, you see, so so oh, right, yeah. so unless we have the, the... The most extension you could have would be to the end of October because otherwise we haven't got time to, yeah, for right. people to read it and mark it and do all those sorts of things. I'll see what happens. I just can't see myself putting pen to paper, though. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> uh, when are you going to see her again? Next Monday. So, six days or something. <clears throat> I'm trying to do as much as I can now. Milk is especially good after bourbon and coke. Uh, Chlorine milk is great. Alternate. You should start with chlorine milk because it lines your stomach. Oh! <laughs> I love chlorine milk. Chlorine milk's fine because chlor is kind of like that creamy. It's like a milkshake. It's Saturday night. Cal's friends are worried about her studying alone all the time. They're persuaded to take a night off and come out in search of Mr. Wright. Cal, have you seen my license? Oh, it's right here. Brother brought this back from um, Florence. Real leather. You like? Never had anything from Fox. Well, Why if you don't come home together? It's happened before. Well, that's true. Hold those kind of comments, man. Oh, please. <laughs> Did you do the security door? Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Did you lock the security door? No, I didn't. I locked it, but I didn't use the deadlock. You didn't use the deadlock? No. How come? Because I reckon the thieves will be out partying with the money that they have from my stolen stuff. Where's the car out here? Um, yeah. Cal, it's a Saturday night. I don't care, man. No, they have, I have nothing left for them to steal. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, where's the car? It's here. What, this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the starting lineup. Netherlands in lane one, Romania in two, Australia drawn in lane three. I'm starving. Do you want to go out to dinner? Where do you want to go? Do you want a tie? No. I'm not hungry yet. Oh. When did you last see? I'm not it. dressed for dinner either, I'm dressed for staying at home. No, oh, you grumpy bummy. I'm not being grumpy. Just be tired.
pay you some time. No, I'm cool, I'm cool. I don't think it's... No, oh, you look gorgeous. Thank you very much, Lucille. I love your jacket. I know, I like it too. Well, I don't know, where do you want to go then? I wouldn't mind going to something like the Nags Head or... Um, has the nags head changed hands recently? Is it? Is it any good? No, they reckon it's not. We go the razor's edge. Anna and Charles have been seeing each other for three months now, but I still can't work out what's going on. Anna does seem to like Charles, just not as much as he wants. But she doesn't talk to me. No. That would be too sort of communicative or nice or something, or warm or something like that. She just um, sort of... I don't know, <clears throat> says things like, I just want to be alone, and then just sort of hangs around my house or something. But I, I think she'll just, I don't know why, she just seems to be listless for the last few days. Like, I, th I, think, I think he's really nice, and, um, like, we get along really, really quite well as friends and stuff, but I'm just not at the moment emotionally kind of available. And I think he's really quite aware of that anyway. Um, in fact, I'm sure he's aware of it. She has not been affected towards me for like three days now. Like we, like in, she, she's actively unaffectionate. So if I, you know, if her hand's there or something and I'll put my arm on her or something, she'll go like that. Like subtly, but sort of, just sort of. Why don't we try out 157? Which one's that? It's the new Cafe Chopper. Yeah, I just hassled them for advertising. All right. What are we going to do, Cal? Our lights are a mess. <laughs> they still have a boyfriend. 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 They still have a You'll be hungry by the time you get done. Harry, would you like me to write the review for the film? Yeah, sure. Because you'll have about a million other things to write. Not that we're talking about work. No, we shouldn't. We should talk about nice things. We don't have anything else in the world to talk about. See? Fuck <laughs> off. Right, there's some wine. To date, Andrew's love life has been almost as dismal as Charles's. <laughs> Wonder if I should put on some fish fingers. Might be alright. He's recently started going out with another art student, Kelsey but is feeling a bit insecure about her after she went off on holiday without him. Did you really think Kelsey wouldn't want to go out with you when she got back from her holiday? Well, I was very suspicious. I mean, <laughs> because all the other girls I've been with, sort of, they go on holiday and, and just sort of forget about the whole thing. So, um, so it was really good that, that um, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel quite jealous about her? About her? No, no. I mean, do you imagine her in the arms of another man? Oh, no. No, no. No, 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 no. Not Kelsey, no. Well, actually, she got back on Sunday and she was exhausted and or something. And we spoke on the phone for, I don't know, a long time. And then we had a passionate hello and, and everything. It was great. It was really good. It was so good to see her again. It was amazingly good to see her again. <laughs> um, which, yeah, because that's never happened. I've never had someone go away and then come back and then be able to <laughs> be all with them again. Why? 
Wow, I'm there, is that what you said? Mm. Um, I missed my alarm and I missed my wake up call. And the first thing I knew today it was this time. So I missed the whole morning. So this is Caroline, I've got 150 exams next week, BT. Well, are these books you read for uni or are they just books for fun? Half and half. <clears throat> they mixed. Half are for uni, half. Not. Obviously. Beneath the Mask, an introduction to theories of personality. Yes. Is that for fun or work? That's, that's, uh, that was my textbook last semester for personality. Wide Awake in America. That's a U2 one. Child Development. That's Education. The Knox Grammarian. <laughs> That's recreational. <laughs> ah, shit! Panel 10. Goes off every nine minutes. Goes every nine minutes, you still can't get out of bed. Oh, I hit it, I hit it in my sleep, I'm serious. So Andrew, what are you going to say in your thesis about Theo Astley? I'm, I mean, well, the thing I'm interested in is, is, is how she presents relationships between men and women, and, 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 and they're just fraught with infidelity of the worst kind. I mean, I don't know what happened to poor Thea, but um, maybe nothing. But there's so much infidelity in those books. And I find infidelity just depresses me anyway, so that's why I find it so hard to get through some of her books. Um, but so, but I want to write about that. Um, you want to write about? You want to speculate about the author's infidelity? No, 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 not about hers, but just, just how she, just, just how she presents her relationships. But I don't know. I haven't crystallised it exactly in my mind as to as to as to how she does, or, or, you know, is there one particular way that she does in all her books? I don't think so. I mean, may as well talk about her variety as much as. As, as, as anything that all the books have in common. Um, so that's going to be your angle? Well, I think so. I mean, men and women and how they just don't get along in Thea Astley. Um, which I don't think... Or in life, particularly. Well, yeah, as in, as in real life. Standing over in a, uh, he's got a cigarette t-shirt on. By the window? Yep, the guy with the gold rimmed glasses. I think he's cool. He is the essence of cool. Everybody knows him, he knows everybody. I've spoken to him before, he, he knows who I, he doesn't know my name, but he certainly knows who I am. But he is like a ringleader of this Manning crowd. There's certain guys you don't even attempt to get. Um, some guys are on the border, and if you, and if you can just get them, then, then that's good. But it's just not good to go out with a guy who's not on your level. Because he'll always be the one that has upper hand. So can you point out anyone here who's on your level? <laughs> oh, don't! <laughs> no, I, can't, I won't. Or I can't. Because it, it's not just a, attractive, physical attractiveness, it's, it's coolness as well. The amount, the amount of friends that you have, it's who you know, it's what you wear, as well as how you look. You know what I mean? Yeah.
I do know what you mean. <laughs> but I also think it's possible to misunderstand your level. But what about this couple here at this table near us? Yes. You know. Are you on the same level? Or? Yeah, well, probably below because she... She would be... Slightly above me, or, or, or level, above me, probably. What about him? He... He's pretty much on her level. That's why they look like a happy couple. Do you think we're happy? Yes. How can you tell? <laughs> so I've been watching them. <laughs> They're all smiles. What are they, they doing now? They're rumbling. That's what happy couples do when they get in silly moods. What's rumbling? Rumbling <laughs> is having a silly pretend fight and then ending up on top of each other. But not in a, um, in a in a bedroom situation. So is it a kind of foreplay? Probably. Yep. Do so you think they're going to go and do it later? Probably. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Explain the song. Well, well, the welcome home thing was was what I wrote. The welcome home chorus was just what I wrote about missing someone when Kelsey was on holiday. Um, I thought, well, it seemed you know. So I wrote, well, just that you know. You've been gone so long. Welcome home, my be Life has made you strong. Maybe I should sing it low like Let It Go. Life has made you strong. So welcome home. And then, and then, um, and then, like when it goes into the first chorus, you know, do you remember? I thought, well, well, we'll get a bit of early childhood thing, or something. I don't know. It just, and it, it ended up just turning into this song about this girl who'd who'd tried to commit suicide. Um, um, and so that's and well, you know, which because I thought, well, that's interesting. It just sort of turned into it without me really knowing what. What was the point of that? Those high school friends who took you to the edge of danger flaming You didn't realise you were so plain, so very small And when you said you'd fallen sick you were just a stranger claiming Place beneath the rocks to put your pain and that was all You claimed a space for pain and that was all Have you ever thought of committing suicide? Have I ever thought of committing suicide? Oh, um, yes, yeah, yeah. I think I think a lot of people do. It gives a bit of thought, um, in in a sort of melodramatic, self-pitying moment or something like that. But um, you know, it takes it takes an enormous amount of insanity and courage to go ahead with it. I think, sort of combined, a great deal of bravery, enormous amount of clinical depression. Um, it must, I don't know. So you've never got as far as trying? Um, yeah, no, actually I did. Yes, when I, when I was very depressed. Um, but um, it was just as well because um, uh, my friend Catherine just rang up after I'd gobbed down some, some tomazepam. A whole lot of it, you know, in a, in a moment of great melodrama and everything. And, uh, you know, 
I mean, I think I even put music on for the occasion, actually. I think how uh, embarrassing, pathetic. Um, yeah, and um, so I mean, yeah. So I mean, I think it's but it seemed it was probably quite normal. <laughs> If the smell is this bad out here, then it's going to be a horrendous, horrendous smell when you actually get in the room. I can, I can see it now. I just have, I really should go and look, shouldn't I? Everyone's in bed and asleep in the mm. hospital. Cal's now the only nurse on duty till the night shift comes in. No. Nope. Very bad here. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be in here. I doubt. <laughs> oh, I think I found my bullseye. Oh, I don't come in. <laughs> Tony. Oh. oh. Okay, a serious situation. When I first um, had to do this, I didn't get the angle right and I, I copped it in the face. And I've had a phobia about it ever since. Carl, why don't you try and get a job in Pizza Hut or something? Oh. No, Simon, I really don't. Okay, what are the three things you most want to achieve with your life in the next five years? Oh, well, number one is to get through bloody uni. Number two. Five years time, I want to be practicing psychology somewhere, and I'd like to have a relationship over three months, sometime in the next five years. This thing, it's called the three month stig. I don't know what it is, but when we, when we get to the two or three month mark, that's the end. What happened? They dump me every time. I can always see it coming, too. How can you see it? <laughs> we start fighting, and they start not showing any interest, they start not calling when they say they will, they start being bastards. And then they avoid me for a couple of days altogether. And then they come over to give me that talk. <laughs> I'm going to have to romp near you now. <laughs> what talk? The talk, you know, the breakup talk. Have you ever had one? How's it go? It goes, it's not that I don't love you, but I just feel <laughs> I'm not ready for a relationship right now. La di da di da. Then what happens? Then I cry. Then they get embarrassed, so they leave. And then I cry for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, depending on how in love I was at the time or how not in love I was. And um, then there's a big gap and then the next one comes along. How long was the gap? Well, the gap, I haven't really had a relationship for a year now. I, I've seen many guys, like, we're just seeing each other for like four or five weeks or something. Then I even get dumped when, I, when I'm seeing someone. So, so I just give up altogether. I don't go looking anymore. 
it happens, it happens. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh. Hi, Gwen. So, Carl, why do these blokes dump you? Which one? The guys you say keep dumping you. Why? Because I, because I smother them. I'm too nice to them. Anna and I have um, just slightly differing expectations about our relationship. Uh oh, but looks like we're heading for to... that talk. I think that's the, the main difficulty in the relationship. It's not that we don't get on or anything, it's just... Or even that we don't understand each other. Yeah. It's just that our expectations about, you know, the relationship is somewhat different. And that means... And what that's sort of basically meant is that we just don't... Like, we've kept it fairly light and everything. But I don't understand how you can keep a relationship light. I really don't. Well, it's not light. I think... I think, um... Yeah, I, do, I don't think it's light. But I think, um, we maintain the rhetoric that it's light. But I think it's important to maintain the rhetoric as well. It's certainly psychologically, for me, there's a big difference. And I know Anna's just having a cell phone, so it doesn't matter. Are you scared of Anna, Charles? See, we have a perfectly good understanding of our relationship. I think we, people who don't communicate at all, we communicate obviously quite well. But Charles just seems a bit unhappy sometimes. Oh, so do I. I mean, so does everybody. What you should do is go out with one of those people who like you. You always run away from the people who like you. you <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I don't want to go out with someone who likes me. I know you don't. You go out with, finally, you get the first person you go out with doesn't like you. <laughs> Anna can't stand you. She She's, want you perfect. To She's perfect. She's perfect for me. Yeah, see? Oh, it's just a terrible idea. My dog Bowser, so who really likes me. I will go out with Rebecca. Would be ah, oh, much better idea. Wouldn't that be amazing? Mm. That'd be excellent. It'd be so good. It'd be so right. And everyone would support you too. <laughs> Except I, I just don't feel like the same attachment to Rebecca as I did. Anyway. No, no, because you haven't spent enough time with her. Except, what do I do? Do I go back to Sydney and say, "Oh, by the way, I've been thinking about things." Um, yes, that's what girls do have done to me my entire life. <laughs> they go away for a few days, come back and say, "Oh, by the way, I thought twice about this. Um, I don't want to go out with you anymore." <laughs> Is that all right? Sorry. That's what you meant to do. Andrew, what went wrong with Kelsey? Oh man, nothing went wrong. Nothing. Nothing went wrong. We never fought. We never argued. We always had fun. We were never unhappy. We were never bored. She just got scared, I think. Came round and said, I've always been alone and I want to be alone again. Right now, with the cheese, I don't feel too bad about it. But, no.
Um, anyway, I'll try my best to try and get back together with her again. And if that doesn't work, well, go with somebody else. I think, um, I think going out with Andrew would be incredibly intense, even if, like, you only saw him, you know, once a week, or twice a week, as, as I think Andrew and Kelsey did. It's fucking stupid. Like, uh, I thought girls liked intense. No, no, they don't. They hate it. They hate it. It is a complete myth. The snag myth. <laughs> God, it's the most painful and awful joke, you know, that you're meant to be emotional if you're a guy. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. They hate it. Like, they want you to be a shit. They want you to treat them disdainfully. They want you to hate them. True. I, that's it's why. So I, that's why I've been so unsuccessful. From experience, they don't want you to be nice. Yeah, because Charles and I are nice. So true. Oh, I think Charles and I are nice. Yeah, I and think we are, and I think we're emotional. Yeah, yeah, and, and they, they hate. That. They run from it. They just absolutely pack up and run from it. <laughs> they really hate it. I think, know? I think no, I'm no, no, I think Andrew and I are both that. very good catches. No, bullshit, no, no, no. Oh, I mean, you might be, I don't know. But <laughs> no, I think I'm a very good catch. Yeah, well, you might be, you might be a very no, good No, no, and I think you're a very good catch. No, it's very nice of you to say so. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like, it is my first relationship, and it's just so bad. No, 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 it's not. No, 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 my first relationship was worse. It was worse. We <laughs> held hands. We didn't kiss. Do you think Anna... I don't think Anna does. I don't think Anna does not like me. I think Anna does like me. Yeah, she does like you. She does. She's just, you know, it's hard to say about these things. They're very complicated. You don't know why. It's just very hard to know. Anna likes me, but she just doesn't want to have sex with me all the time. Yes, yes. I really enjoy sex when it is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you should have it with somebody else. Anna. But Anna, why do you always shove me away? Anna, I can't tell you how much I'm aching. Anna, for you to put out your bacon. You're like no other lover, not even my mother. At least she was always around. I know that it grieves you whenever I leave you Cause Anna, I know that you love me deep down It's true, I wanna have sex with you It's true, please let me have sex Mistaken. Anna, I you might you. think that I was mistaken, but Anna, I hope, I I hope, hope you were faking. I hope you were always faking each. <laughs> um, so I, mean, I know that sex is overrated. Anna, I know you think loving is overrated. All I want is a ride And I With my Filipino bride It's true I wanna have sex with you It's true Please let me have sex with you Sex with you once Wanna have sex with you once? Oh, Anna, why can't you let me when I'm absolutely surrounded by cunts? It's true, I wanna have sex with you, but you're so nasty to me. Please let me have sex with you. So tired of you being free.
Never need come ringing at my door You can leave garbage all over my floor You can be the lifelong hope I never had But whatever you do, baby, don't get sad You can change your nature, you can go anywhere You can change your ideas, you can change your hair Change your brain if it's going mad But whatever you do, baby, don't get sad You can make your fortune in the land of songs You can find another lover and take him along He might treat you kind, he might treat you bad But whatever you do, baby, don't get sad don't go getting sad Please don't go getting sad They can take your beauty, they can use your mind They can lock you away and they can send you blind You better say goodbye to mom and dad But whatever they do, baby, don't get sad Cause I might do things you don't want to see I might sometimes beg you come back to me And I might say, hey, I love you bad But whatever I do, baby, don't get sad Yeah, maybe not come ringing at your door Or I might leave garbage all over your floor there's a lifelong hope we never had But whatever you do, baby, don't get sad You can be the lifelong hope I never had But whatever happens, baby, don't get sad Whatever you do, baby, don't get sad Yeah, whatever you do, baby, don't get sad Anna, what's happening between you and Charles? Um, uh, I think it's going really well at the moment because we've broken up but we're still like, well, he would say we've broken up. <laughs> um, and like, but I think we're still like quite friendly and stuff. Um, like it just wasn't happening and then sort of sometime on the weekend, I can't remember where, Friday or Monday or something, like he was being really depressed and all melodramatic and so he came over and we had this long talk and I actually managed to convince him that he shouldn't be annoyed at me. So I don't think he's actually annoyed at me anymore. So that's really good. Do you think you're ever suited? I mean, do you think you're a bad match to start with? Um, yeah, yeah, romantically we totally were. Like, I think we're a good, very good match to be excellent friends. And I think, like, he really should be more like another Robert than a, like, a romance. And I never, like, I don't know. He said you never had sex with him. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not quite that simple. If, like, if, if you had sex every time Charles wanted to have sex, you would never have a chance to breathe, to be honest. But, like, it's so mean. <laughs> like, that's my point of view. But, no, like... Has he played you a song? What song? What song? <laughs> no, he hasn't played me his song, is it? Oh, God, how embarrassing. 
What song? Me and Andrew written the song. About what? About you and him. Oh breaking no! It. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. Has he played it for you? Yes. Oh no! <laughs> Look how bad. That's but I'm gonna have to go and listen to it now. Oh no! I wish you hadn't told me that. I'll give you a preview. All right. Can I watch it? Anna, you got why it on won't tape? you have sex with me? <laughs> Oh, Anna, no. I know you love me underneath. He is so dumb though, that's the thing. He doesn't believe that I know what I feel and that I don't love him. Like I don't, I can't believe he's arrogant enough to expect that I love him just because I had sex with him like twice or something. Like, oh, how annoying. I'm going to go and be shitty at him now. All right, let's go. <clears throat> now, I'll start working on the fiction side of it first. In fact, maybe, I'll just, maybe only the fiction side, I don't know. Um, Andrew's got to deliver an outline for his thesis to his tutor tomorrow. Victor. It's always, a, that can always be an ironic name because he'll be a loser as a character. After bemoaning the cold-heartedness of all women with Charles over half a kilo of triple cream cheese, he's feeling much better about his life and is ready to get back to work. Um, wounded and too proud to admit his own part in pushing Gretchen away, Victor retreats to Karawong Island. Uh, no, I actually wanted to call it Cassowary Island. And I've written the opening few paragraphs. Yeah. And, uh, and oh, then oh, started to talk new, about yes, yeah, yes, yes. Of her yeah, okay. of her next book, and then started to talk about rain shadow. Mm, mm. And I sort of partway into talking about rain shadow, and uh, that's mm. really as far as I've have you got gone. With it? Yes, um, yes, yeah. Okay. The hospital has given Cal time off work to prepare for her exams. She has the weekend to memorize the five tenses of 200 irregular Latin verbs. What time did you get to bed, Cal? Yeah. Four. You had two hours sleep. Charles can no longer ignore the call of economic social science. He's given up on Anna for the moment. He's down, but not out. Things are settling down on campus as everybody goes into pre-exam hibernation. But the peace will be short-lived, for the Prime Minister is planning to visit his old uni, just when his government is forcing big cuts to university staff and courses. Soon, a call goes out. It's time to man the barricades. Andrew's thesis outline touched a chord with his tutor. She's given him another six weeks to finish it. But it's lonely sitting at home at the computer, and he's soon out chasing other dreams. I've begun to realise there's something Andrew's looking for in his music that he's not finding in his books. Hi, how are you? Um, my name's Andrew, and I was, I was wondering if you'd be interested in me playing guitar, playing a few songs in the cafe. Testing to do. Yeah. Leave your number, and I'll get the owner to call you. Um, yeah, nice thought, Andrew, but I'd lose my liquor licence if I did. Never mind, thanks anyway. Good luck. See you. 
If only I could get Andrew and Cal together. They seem perfect for each other. But I have to keep reminding myself I'm making a documentary and things don't happen that way in real life. I've written some songs. You want me to, want me to have a go? We've seen fountains in the desert. They built them long ago. We've seen madmen running desperately, trying to take it slow. To be loved, to be going to be loved, to have been loved. To have never been loved. Shall we go? I've never been loved for long, anyway. Yeah, take me when you know me. Oh, maybe you're searching your life through. Are you? Let me tell you, I'm searching for the same thing. Uh -huh. I don't know what it is, but it's in you. Same thing, uh -huh. I don't know what it is, but it's in you.